Hello everyone, my name is Iris Franz, we are Ling Wanru. Today we are going to talk about the Ward's Law. So Ward's Law using plain English is this. The value of aggregate axis demand is equal to zero. And today we are going to prove that this equation holds. So last time we have established that Z1 is the aggregate axis demand of good one from Alice and Bob. And Z2 is the aggregate axis demand of good two from Alice and Bob. And today we're going to show that P1 times Z1 plus P2 times Z2 is equal to zero. And notice that this P is just any kind of price. It does not have to be the equilibrium price. And for notation, I'm going to um, use a vector P to replace P1 and P2. It just saves me some work. It doesn't change anything. So we're going to start from the left hand side and eventually you're going to see that you sum them up, you get zero. So you can see the left hand side, P1 times Z1. What is Z1? Z1 really is just the excess demand of good one from Alice plus the excess demand of good one from Bob. You sum them up, you get Z. So I'm just going to break it down into the axis demand of good one from Alice and Bob. And I'm doing the same thing for Z2. I'm breaking it down to the axis demand for good two from Alice and from Bob. So I didn't change anything. I'm just breaking it down. And we also know that axis demand um, for good one from Alice is equal to her consumption for um, good one minus her endowment for good one. And same thing for Bob. We know the excess demand for good one from Bob is equal to his consumption of good one minus his initial endowment. And I'm going to do the same thing for good two. I'm just breaking it down. I didn't change anything. And next, I'm going to put everything that belongs to Alice together and everything that belongs to Bob together. So you can see that I'm pulling this to the left and pulling whatever belongs to Bob together. So you can see now um, on the left hand side here, we have the value of the excess demand for good one from Alice and the value of Alice excess demand for good two. And here we have the value of excess demand um, for good one from Bob and the value of excess demand um, for good two for Bob. And notice that um, I'm going to expand this term. You are going to see that here we have the value of the consumption bundle for Alice. And here we have the budget of Alice, meaning well, this is the original endowment multiply by the price, then that's our budget. And for our um, utility to be maximized, we know that this term has to be zero. Why is that? Because for Alice, after she sells whatever um, endowment she has, she uses all the money to buy her consumption bundle, XA1 and XA2. And this is the same for Bob. After he sells his endowment, his initial endowment, he uses all the money to buy his consumption bundle, XV1 and XV2. So we know this term also has to be zero. So we have proof that this term is zero plus zero, that is equal to zero. So we have proven Warren's law. I hope this helps. I'll see you next time.